What was once a thriving ant colony with hundreds of workers that were on track to becoming a mighty empire of ants just faced a horrible tragedy, and I'll tell you why. I haven't featured this colony for quite a while, and if you like this sort of content, and if you think I deserve it, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. When I reach 5,000 subscribers on my channel, I will do an updated ant room tour where I show every single ant species and colony that I own. There are so many species that I've never even shown once in a video on my channel before, and it would mean the world to me if you would subscribe and help me reach that goal. With that said, let's get into today's video. This is my colony of Campanatus castaneus. I have had this colony ever since the very start of my ant keeping journey, as well as the start of my YouTube channel, with videos of this colony from over 5 years ago. This colony has been through many ups and downs over the years, and they have always been very strong, and they've had to endure quite a few obstacles and beginner mistakes that I made way back when. This is my oldest colony that I own, and it's also my favorite, and I think that it's safe to say that they are the reason why Campanatus are my favorite ant genus, and why I have so many different species now. These ants are among the prettiest Campanatus ants that I have ever kept, and they are super active and have stunning majors. They are also a large species of ant, and they definitely have a special place in my heart, and if this colony ever were to die out, I would certainly get another colony of this species without a doubt. This colony is currently housed in a Tar Heel ant's nest connected to this outworld, and this colony currently sits at just over 100 workers, give or take. But there's a problem. This colony recently had a major die-off this past ant season, and I'm not sure why. They used to have over triple the amount of workers that they have now. But luckily, the queen survived, and the die-off suddenly stopped one day. They barely produced any new workers this year, and they ended up with one batch of larvae before the end of the season. Unfortunately, this colony is now close to hibernating, and that means that they are not producing any more brood, and the colony will not grow anymore until next spring. Whenever I take off the lid to this colony, many workers start swarming the entrance. Luckily, their escape barrier that I have for them made out of Vaseline is very effective at keeping them at bay. After waiting a few hours for the colony to calm down a little bit, I took advantage of there not being any workers in the outworld, and I plan to clean their enclosure. I have found that the best way to do this effectively is to use a small suck-up vacuum, and if any of the workers happen to get sucked up in the process, I can easily put them back in the outworld once I'm done cleaning their setup. All that I can do for them right now is continuing feeding them sugars and small amounts of protein, as well as water, before the end of the ant season, and pray that they have a more successful year next season. And as you can tell by the background, it is Halloween season, and what better way to celebrate than to give my ants some Halloween-themed treats. In front of me are four different flavors of candy corn that I'm separating into small sections for the ants to feed on. I am also going to give them a Sour Patch Kid out of curiosity to see if they like it or not. Now that everything is ready, and the food has been put in place, it's time to reattach the outworld and introduce the colony. Thank goodness there weren't any workers trying to escape at this point, because this process proved a lot more difficult than usual. Now, all that we have to do is wait for the workers to find the food and see if they like it or not. I'm going to add a bit of water to each of these pieces of candy corn, that way it can dissolve a little bit and make it easier for the ants to consume. Here, you can see one of the ants getting a taste of the Sour Patch Kid and running back to the rest of the colony to let them know what she found, leaving a pheromone trail for the ants to follow. After she excitedly showed the other ants what she found, she quickly scurried back to the Sour Patch Kid, and not long after, more ants followed. Some of the ants were also beginning to discover the candy corn in the feeding dish, and they seemed to particularly enjoy the red one. You can also see that over time, as the ant drinks more of the liquid, her gaster begins to expand and it also begins to turn red. She will soon bring all of this nectar back to the colony and feed the remaining workers. Pretty soon, there were tons of workers in the outworld feeding. One of my favorite parts of ant keeping is being able to watch my colonies feed and get time lapses like this one. It is really entertaining to watch them go about their business and watch what each individual ant is doing. From 5 years of experience, Campanatus ants are definitely my favorite species of ant by far. Even though they are slow growing at first, and it takes about a year for them to have a considerable amount of workers to be able to move them out of their founding test tube, it is well worth the wait, because once you get a colony going, they are so much fun to keep. 
As you've seen in some of my recent videos, Campanatus ants come in all different shapes and sizes and colors, and the majority of Campanatus species are larger. They have stunning majors, which sometimes have unique coloring traits compared to the normal workers, and the majority of Campanatus species are beginner friendly. I would definitely recommend Campanatus for any beginner ant keeper who is patient enough to wait, because they are more than worth it. Now let's move on and check out the nest. This colony is currently housed in a Tar Heel ant's nest, and about half of the nest is completely covered in moss, but it doesn't hurt the colony in any way. I will hibernate this colony in this nest over the winter, and hopefully next spring they will grow out of it, and I can finally move them into something and give this nest a good cleaning for later use. Getting closer, you can see the workers that were feeding in the outworld have a red color to their gaster, and now they are feeding the other workers in the colony that stayed in the nest. You can really see in these clips just how beautiful this species is. I can feed them any color of honey that I want, and any ant that drinks it will end up having that color show throughout their body. This species also has a very beautiful orange color that is not seen with many ant species, and they are also on the larger side of Campanatus. I hope that you all enjoyed this long-awaited update on this colony. They have definitely been through their ups and downs over the years, but they are still going strong, and I believe that next year they can definitely make a big comeback. I have many more exciting videos on the way, so be sure not to miss them. If you think that I deserve it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. When I reach 5,000 subscribers, I will make an ant room tour video that features every single colony that I have on the channel, and I will also go over some species that I've never before featured on the channel. So, if you're interested in that, please subscribe, and with that said, thank you all for watching, and until next time, peace.